In this assignment, uh, you were asked to uh, practice the uh, continuous review uh, inventory system, inventory management system, uh, on a problem of uh, ordering cell phones. Uh, so uh, you were asked to um, compare costs of the EOQ with the cost of the current policy uh, that uh, Bintu had in terms of ordering uh, cell phones. And then you were asked to also come up with a reorder point uh, based on the lead time and, uh, and the demand during the lead time. So the questions um, that you had in here were, uh, based on the current policy, what is the total cost uh, associated with inventory? Uh, compute the uh, economic order quantity, uh, which would be the uh, the uh, which would answer the question how much to order uh, in, in when you are following the the continuous review inventory system. Uh, what is our total annual cost uh, associated with ordering using the EOQ, which would give you a comparison across her current policy and uh, the policy using EOQ? And then, if there's a lead time of two weeks and, and if there's standard deviation given to you, uh, what would be the reorder point uh, given a certain service factor associated with a cycle service level of 90%. Um, that's, that's the, uh, that was a question for reorder point. And then what would be the decision? How would you uh, go about uh, uh, implementing this, this kind of an inventory system or how would Bintu go about implementing? So what you noticed was uh, you were also given the table of demand, although you didn't really need it you could infer uh, the average demand based on the information that you had in the text, but you were given a table of demand. Uh, and, and I put it in there from the point of view of uh, if you uh, were interested, you could even calculate the standard deviation uh, and the average uh, based on uh, the demand that's in there. So to make it real, uh, that, that's how you would get the average and that's how you would get the standard deviation uh, based on data that you would have. And in this case, uh, you had the data given to you. Anyway, so, so let's start with the first question of uh, uh, given her current policy uh, of ordering um, a certain quantity every time she places an order, um, what would be her uh, ordering cost? Uh, what would be her total costs of uh, inventory management? So she was ordering uh, 2,600 units every time she placed an order, uh, and uh, her annual demand uh, for the four kiosks that she had at the mall uh, were uh, 10,000. 400 units. So that's the annual demand, 2,600 units uh, being ordered every time she placed an order, and therefore that gave you the total number of orders. So 10,400 divided by 2,600 gives you total number of orders in a year. Multiply that by the cost of ordering per order is $200, and that gives you uh, the ordering cost over a year of $800. So there were a total of four orders. She was only placing four orders in a year. Each cost her uh, $200, and the ordering cost was $800. Now, for the holding cost, uh, there was a little bit of uh, um, additional information that was given to you over and above the traditional percentage that we associate with holding costs. So um, there was a 11% holding cost uh, on a cost price of $50. Uh, so that was simple, 11.11 times $50. But there was also this uh, insurance cost that was given uh, of uh, a uh, one cent uh, per week and 52 weeks in a year, so uh, one cent times 52 weeks. Now, the thing that you want to keep in mind here, uh, based on looking at something like this, or, or the, the, the questions that you should be asking when you see a cost that's given to you is, uh, um, should we include this in the holding cost or should we not include this, and what would be the basis for including something in the holding cost? Uh, and, and for that, uh, you should think about, uh, is um, this going to be affected by the quantity that we hold? So for example, if you're, if you're paying rent uh, for your shop uh, and that is not affecting or that is not uh, going to be based on the quantity that you hold, you're not going to take that rent and, and try it uh, to, to associate it uh, with the holding cost for the inventory that you're holding. Uh, if you have a, a certain degree of uh, a theft, you're losing a, a phone per week. Now that is, you're losing a phone per week uh, based on, on some reason. Uh, if you're losing a phone per week, or you're losing a, a phone every 10 weeks, uh, and it's based on uh, either being stolen or uh, depreciation from it being a, a showpiece, a showroom piece uh, that people get to try. Uh, that's not the, something that's going to vary based on the inventory that you're holding, so that should not be included uh, in the holding cost. So those are the things that you want to keep in mind from a practical perspective. What should you include and what you should not include in your holding cost? But here, uh, it was clear that there was uh, a, a quantity-based uh, 
uh, insurance cost of uh, a cent per week. So it's 0 0.01 uh, for 52 weeks uh, per phone, right? So that's what we're going to include uh, in the holding cost. So, um, so that's why it's included there. And then um, you take the holding cost uh, um, for a single phone over a year, and then you, um, so it's, it's a cost of, um, if you were to hold the phone for a year, that would be the, the, the cost of it. And then you multiply by the average inventory. And in this case, the average inventory would be uh, 2,600 divided by two. Um, the the uh, assumption that is implied in this 2,600 divided by two is that when she's buying 2,600, uh, there's a continuous replenishment, uh, continuous uh, depletion of that 2,600 uh, over the period uh, that it, de it depletes to, to zero, and then she gets another 2,600. So we take the average of the starting and the ending being uh, 2,600 and zero, and then uh, th the average works out to 1,300. So based on that, you get a total holding cost for a year of $7,826. So total cost of 8626 um, from this, you can see a sense, uh, you can get a sense of uh, that this must be far off from uh, EOQ. The 2,600 units um, order quantity would be far off from EOQ because what should happen uh, if, if she was ordering something close to an EOQ? What would have happened is that the ordering cost over a year would have been close to the holding cost over a year. So here, it's, it's quite uh, far apart, 800 versus 7,826. So it's telling you that... Uh, uh, her order quantity is, is going to be far off from the EOQ. So let's take the next step and actually compute what the EOQ is. Uh, so for that, we have the annual demand, we have the setup cost. The annual demand uh, is 10,400 units. The setup cost is uh, uh, 200 units. And you divide that by the holding cost. The holding cost is calculated separately for you up there, although we calculated it uh, earlier as well on the previous slide, $6.02. So uh, you take that uh, calculation and you get 831.28 units. Uh, since you're talking cell phones here, uh, decimal points are not going to have any meaning. So uh, you are going to say we're going to round it to 831 units. Now, if you remember that the EOQ is, is robust to uh, the, the Q star, uh, moving from Q star a little bit to the left or to the right, so um, you going above or below, uh, the optimal quantity a little bit is not going to affect uh, total cost too much. And if you want to, to see how it affects, you can even make a spreadsheet and, and keep calculating ordering costs and holding costs at different quantities above and below 831, and you'll be able to see how much difference it makes in the total cost when you move away from that. But that wasn't part of the question, uh, so, so let's move on to, um, uh, to what would be the total cost uh, based on this EOQ. What would be the... Uh, total annual cost of, of uh, uh, inventory management associated with uh, using the EOQ as uh, to, to, to decide how much to order. So uh, if you take the ordering cost separately and the holding cost separately, for the ordering cost, you need a total number of orders. So total number of orders would be 10,400 units uh, of annual demand divided by 831 units that she would order every time she would place an order. You multiply that by the um, order cost of ordering every time you order or every time she orders. And that works out to $2,503. Um, holding cost uh, would be based on $6.02 per unit. Um, annual cost of uh, holding a unit for a year is $6.02. You multiply that by average inventory. And once again, the average inventory is going to be simply Q divided by 2. Um, given the assumptions that, that that we talked about a little bit earlier, and and that cost works out to 2,501. So 2,503, 2,501. You notice that they are close to each other, uh, subject to rounding. They should be um, close to each other uh, to to uh, to the extent of a few decimals, right? Uh, so uh, if you would have taken exactly the the order quantity that we got from the EOQ, you may have got. Uh, even closer numbers than 2,501, 2,503. Nevertheless, the total cost works out to $5,004. Now, you could have used uh, the, the other formula that we had talked about associated with EOQ, uh, which is uh, under square root of two times the annual demand times the setup cost times the annual holding cost, and you would have got uh, the exact same number. And, and you can check that. You would get approximately uh, 5,004 as the total cost using that formula as well. All right, so um, given that we have this decision of if uh, 
uh, Bintu is going to follow the continuous review system, uh, and she's going to use the EOQ to decide uh, how much to order, um, how would she decide uh, when to order. And for that, you were given some additional information uh, to come up with her ROP, her reorder point. So when would she place an order? She would place an order uh, by continuously reviewing her inventory, and whenever it reached this particular point, she would place an order. Right. So uh, how would you come up with a reorder point? Well, first we need the lead time. So uh, the, the lead time that we have here is given to us as two weeks. Uh, we already knew the average weekly demand of uh, 20 units. How did we know that? Well, you can, you can get to it uh, multiple ways. Uh, you can take the data and compute the average, or you can say there were 10,400 units uh, and uh, being demanded for the year, and therefore you can come up with a weekly demand from that as well. So uh, the average weekly demand is, is uh, um, uh, 200 units, uh, and then uh, you take the demand during lead time for two weeks is going to be uh, 400 units. The safety stock uh, that you would calculate based on uh, the idea that uh, she wants to cover uh, up to 90% uh, for uh, of the demand during the lead time. So uh, we have a uh, multiplier of 1.28 uh, coming from uh, a, a level of 90% service that she wants to maintain. Uh, we have the standard deviation uh, that is computed as uh, 29 based on the data that you have, but the standard deviation is also given to you, so you could have used uh, 29 there, uh, and then you take uh, under square root of 2 to, uh, to convert this uh, weekly standard deviation to standard deviation during lead time. So you multiply that by square root of 2, uh, and you get uh, 52.49 for the safety stock. So uh, what do we have here? We have uh, demand during lead time of 400 units. We have safety stock of 52.49 units. Uh, so the reorder point works out to demand during lead time plus safety stock works out to 452 units. Uh, so uh, that would be her reorder point. And based on this, the, the last uh, aspect that was asked uh, of you is uh, how would you implement uh, this, this continuous review system for her? So what would be the decision rules for her? Uh, order 831 units, which is the EOQ, uh, whenever the inventory reaches 452 units. So this would be her uh, continuous review inventory system uh, based on EOQ and the reorder point.